Hi, in this installment, I'm going to walk you through some of the patterns of creation myths to give you kind of a feel for what it is we're going to be doing in the upcoming activity. And if you want to follow along with um, either the, um, the PowerPoint, uh, the, the slides that I have on, on uh, Blackboard this week, or on the longer lecture, either, either is fine. So we have a lot of uh, different th theorists who um, specialize in creation myths, and they organize all the motifs that appear in these myths in different ways. Ultimately, creation myths are about creation, generally the creation of the universe, the earth, and of human beings. Some scholars argue that all myths are creation myths. They're cre the creation of, uh, of social order, creation of physical order. Um, but for our purposes, we're going to narrow it down to creation myths being um, the, 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 the type of stories in which the universe and its inhabitants are created. We'll look at social um, creation myths in a later lecture. So as I'm going through the um, PowerPoint here, we're using Marta Wagel's system. She has nine different motifs that she has found as she's examined creation myths from around the world. And what we do with these motifs is two things. We see how creation myths from all over the world have similar features, and we also see what features are unique to individual cultures and how those features are shaped by that culture. So any of these um, lists would be, would be fine. I just like Wagels because it's the longest. All right. As you read your myths this week, uh, read them with an eye to uh, determining what is the uh, what is the motif that seems to be governing this particular myth? Are there several? Um, so myths, don't, the creation myths don't always just have one motif. Sometimes they have several. And keep track of that as you go, and that'll make your um, activity a little easier once you start on that. So to begin um, with um, Wagle, she talks about accretion and conjunction. So we're looking at. Um, kind of a mingling of elements, let me go down to my notes here, where you have order being created out of the chaos, the chaos um, of the primal deep, maybe waters mingling together, earth, wind, fire. Um, so the mingling of these mountains rising from seas, um, all these joining of elements are what we call accretion or conjunction, things building and mingling together. So, for example, we have a Norse myth uh, of creation where we have fire and ice coming together to create the world, right? And in the longer lecture, there are, there are several examples for you. Secretion stories are those that have to do with um, a usually a deity and um, what comes from the deity's body. Sometimes these deities are sacrificed and, and their body parts are used um, in, in creating the world, but sometimes the world is created from sweat or tears or in, in the um, one, one, uh, one African myth, we have Bumba, the god who creates the world literally through throwing up. So anything that comes from the human body, whether they gave it up uh, willingly or not, are called secretion stories. Uh, related to sacrifice stories, we mentioned that sometimes a, a deity is sacrificed and then the body parts are used to create the world. Maybe eyebrows become forests and hair becomes the land or, or tears become the rivers. When that, uh, when that deity either self-sacrificed his himself, he gives up his own life for this creation to occur, or if he is sacrificed by someone else, this is called a sacrifice story. Right? Division stories, um, these often occur when one of two things happens. We have a divine cosmic egg floating on the cosmic sea, and at some point it cracks open and allows the seeds of life to um, start uh, multiplying and, and doing what they do. 
the other instance where this seems to happen most frequently is when the sky and earth are together and there's no room in between them for creation to begin. Something comes along, a deity, a force, depending on the story, and pushes sky and land away from each other so that now there's something, a space in between where life can begin. And again, there are several examples um, in the longer lecture of, of different ways that this occurs. Earth diver stories are really interesting. These are stories where uh, a, a deity, or often an animal, particularly in Native American stories, an animal will dive down to the bottom of a lake or the ocean and bring back some primal materials, dirt, sand, clay, bring it back up to the surface, and it's those little bits of grit that he brings up. Usually something, sometimes the animal doesn't live, but when he bobs up to the surface, there's enough clay or dirt under his nails to begin this process of building the earth. This is usually when the earth, the land, is created. These are stories that account for where did the actual land come from. And these are called earth diver stories. Stories very specific to um, Native American stories, most frequently uh, the Southwest and some Mesoamerican stories as well are called emergence stories. Now this emergence, the word emerge means something very specific here. This emergence means that um, groups of people are moving through different levels under the earth. All right, This is happening within the core of the earth itself. There are different levels and different things happen to cause them to move from one level to the next. Uh, they, they disobeyed or they're being rewarded. Um, it's getting too crowded. There are lots of different reasons that they, they go from one level to the other. Okay, And usually they have helpers to get them from one level to the other, climbing up ladders or through reeds, all sorts of devices for getting these groups of people up through these different levels until finally they emerge into the upper world where we live now, sometimes through a magic hole in the ground like the Grand Canyon. That's a site of emergence for a group of, of um, a group of cultures. So emergence is specifically American Southwest or Mesoamerican. I don't, there may be some of these kind of stories elsewhere in the world, but I haven't come across them. So that's, those are emergence stories. Um, two creators, very frequently you have Two creators put it, doing the world together, um, sometimes siblings, sometimes man and wife. Um, sometimes we have two siblings, twins, a good twin and a bad twin. So the bad twin tries to destroy what the good twin has done, and that accounts for features um, like, um, or, or bad features in the environment, right? Uh, or more dangerous features. And um, finally, we have, well, we have two more, Deus Faber, um, which means a man, man the creator. So this is when a deity is actually making, um, most frequently humans, um, making um, man out of clay or wood or out of some material. And the last one is Ex Nihilo. nihilo. Um, I've got a typo on my list here, it's, it's Ex Nihilo. Um, people, again, this is generally people, but it could be plants and everything else as well, being made out of nothingness, where someone maybe breathes on the water and the world starts, or someone makes uh, a chant or says a word, um, and this is what causes humans to come into existence. So as you go through this lecture material, annotate it thoroughly so you make sure you understand and apply these motifs to your stories as you're reading them and work on that first activity.